Booty, 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 rocking everywhere. Booty, 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 booty. I don't have an ass. Hey guys, welcome back to the Words Are Hard show. Uh, my name is Mike, with me as always is Alex and Greg. Uh, we're going to get right into it. Um, we're going to spin that wheel. Yeah, as always, we have a randomizer full of topics. Let us know your topic suggestions down in the comments below, along with a suggestion. If we draw your topic, then we'll do your suggestion within reason, to the best of our fucking abilities. But today, we're going to talk about retro video games. This one was suggested to me by my uh, buddy Jeremiah. Uh, so, you know, big shout outs to you um, and your need to be a big fucking nerd <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy your retro video game. So, yeah. So what what, what yeah. console should we start out for uh, for retro video games? Okay, so? that, that was uh, my sort Let's of... Let's uh, start out with my first retro video no, game, no, no, the like, Pong. Well, well, that's sort of... That's, that's, <laughs> that's what I wanted to bring up first, though, is like... Um, how do we define what's a retro video game? Because what's retro to us might not be retro. You know what well, I mean? Well, that's like, the thing. PS2, if you're going with, like, with, like... The fact that we're talking about retro video games and you bring up the PS2. Kind and of that's the thing. Is yeah, that, that That's not retro. Okay, no, no. So, like... That's still, like, next gen to me. And, and that, to, to me, that that's my favorite console, right? But it's starting to become um, a retro video game console. It's starting to get up there in age, right? I which I hate it. I hate the I fact that I would consider that the Nintendo sixty four maybe a retro video yes. game console. Yes. Anything that uses discs to me <clears throat> is old, but not quite retro yet. Not yet. No. So I guess I we'll, we'll say almost that almost allow the original Xbox and the original PlayStation to be considered retro at this point because it has been the original I would, Xbox I would give and you the that. original PlayStation weren't out at the same time though. No, they no, weren't. But what I'm saying is that like they're they're, they're still compared to each other, right? Why? Because w- when the Xbox came out, that would have been GameCube generation. Even the GameCube to a point. Was... Yeah, but no, but what I'm saying is the people usually associate the original PlayStation with the original Xbox. They associate the PS2 with the Xbox 360. Uh, oh, see, no, wait, no, I'm yeah, back a step, yeah. aren't I? Because it was see, PS2 and Xbox. See, because when I had my PlayStation... PS3 and Xbox when, 360. When, when I had my PlayStation 1 um, that my dad and I would play on, um, that's about the time that I had got a Nintendo 64. Yeah, you're right. Because I mean, like the the original PlayStation, so though, you... I would I would consider retro, mainly because it, it was along the same lines as yeah. uh, the Dreamcast, not which so much the Xbox, because the Xbox isn't as old as I thought it was. Sure. I don't so know why I was thinking that. So would... let's let's. But my problem is is that there's some kids nowadays who are like, that's the, old. The original Xbox and Halo and and like, oh, that's a retro game to a point. It's like fuck that. Yeah, <laughs> shut up, you little. So snot okay, so we'll we'll work our way. We're, we'll start from the very beginning, and we'll. Pong. So you're so back in 1919 when you started playing pong. Yeah, 1919. Fuck you. <laughs> it was it was the you know the new what big was, thing. What was that? Uh, what was that old console where you actually had to take the screen layouts and put them on the TV? That was and and the, then all you had was a colored light. That was the Magnavox Odyssey. And you're like, oh, I never got to do. That was the first home video game console. Was that it? it wasn't the most. It wasn't the first popular one, but it, it was, was the first it was, one. It was literally just a light on the screen that you control with a knob, and then you take overlays and physically put them on your screen. And it's like you're in a maze. That's and the thing. You just make the light go through the maze, but like because it's a screen overlay, you can put the light anywhere you want. Effectively, you yeah. Just run it through. through. Well, the thing is with the Magnavox, it, th- th- it came with like. <coughs> it came with like six carts though that you would put into the system and it it's would like, it would rea- it would allow the, the now the light's blue or now there's two lights <gasps> two lights and that's the thing. I guess and that's the thing it wouldn't be it wouldn't be blue either though because it was like black still and black and white TVs right yep. I mean that, that that even that being said you know oh, when yeah, color yeah. TV started becoming a thing it was basically just these color overlays that you put on the screen yeah. like literally like they were like you put in the cart that was cat versus mouse it made two lights yeah and then you just put on an overlay of like a kitchen and chase the lights around basically so it was interesting so i mean and of course that so video games it's yeah so would you consider what you owned as retro or just the things that were prior to you you know what i mean like i owned um like the classic nes right but to me a retro video game would be the atari like the 2600 right sure 
So I, I never I had, had an Atari. At one point too. That's why I'm saying. Well, I never had an Atari. That's why I would consider it retro. Like nowadays, the NES would be retro, but to me, sure, retro is whatever came before me. See, I, the, the, I, I'm at the distinct disadvantage that the other than what you just described about putting the overlay on the TV, nothing came before me. <laughs> <laughs> nothing came before me for well, for that's the thing games. for for video, video games. Uh, I normally associate. N64, uh, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, and Sega. I'm just using Sega as kind of a blanket there because I miss Sega they had a few. A console. No. Uh, so what, what, what was your favorite game on? I used to play Sega Genesis all the time. What was your favorite game on there? I, I really only played Sega. I think in my entire life I may have played the uh, Genesis once. Wow. Like maybe once I or twice. I always liked the Sonic games. Yeah. Which I played Sonic, and, and that was pretty much Altered it. Beast was always fun. Altered Beast was pretty cool. Uh, Shaq Fu yep. was a lot of fun. Um, I, I remember, <coughs> was it NBA Jams that was on there, the first one? So. And then um, and Primal Rage was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, Primal Rage. I never played a lot of it. I never had a Genesis, but I had a couple friends that had them. So did I. <laughs> and I didn't play them a lot because I didn't... The Mortal Kombat games were weirdly fun on that one. Because it had the extra buttons, like the arcade did. The Mortal Kombat games are always fun anyway, yeah. though, I find. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, specifically on the Genesis, like, yeah. if somebody said, you know, do you want to play it on the Super Nintendo or the Genesis, the Genesis just felt more like an arcade. Well, it's because it had, it had, technically it had fewer buttons. You know? Yeah, it but it, it, it was laid yeah. out like an arcade. Like It was, it, exactly, which made things a bit easier, because you could, like, literally just, like, tap with these three fingers and you're fine. Yeah, but I'm not, like, like a, like a... I feel left like out to like do this. Good. I'm not a fighting game savant. I'm not like the Rain Man of Mortal Kombat, so no, I didn't exactly. put it down on the table and play. You're it like not the this. Rain Man of anything. So I mean, I so a few uh, years back, you're the Rain Man of being Rain Man. So I grew up with a Super Nintendo, uh, even though it was technically old hat at that point. Like the N64, the N64 be- like was the big thing when I was getting my Super Nintendo. Uh, cause my parents are kind of backwards and see. Don't I was understand. I was born in '91, so sure. I was born at the peak of the NES, right? You guys are cute. Which is, which is what? Like, because the NES came out, what, 1989? 86? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. 86, 87, yeah. 87, I think. I think but I remember, yeah. like, growing up, and Dad was, like, showing me, like, he's playing Mario and, um, you know, Mario 1 and Mario 3. Yeah, that doesn't mean that he didn't get one. Tetris. and At that point. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's been around since 87. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, like, it's it's been around, but it was, like, kind of in its heyday. Yeah, to effect. I mean, and that's the thing, is that I associate, I strongly associate retro video games with Super Nintendo games, like, at any flea market or at any, uh, <laughs> like, At this point, I feel like, I feel like any cartridge game is going to be retro, really yeah. Cool, so. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, what was your favorite, you know? Cartridge-based game, then. Wait, what was your favorite retro Mine game? Mine would be uh, Breath of the Wild on Nintendo Switch. I mean, okay. That's... Any, anything that predates... <laughs> Didn't we just associate that anything yeah. with a cartridge, though, is retro? I wouldn't consider that a cartridge. That's an SD card. To a... It, to uh, a I don't know. <laughs> so, um... Cartridges are bulky and inconvenient. And so, <laughs> when, when I had my NES... The two main games that we had was obviously Duck Hunt, the, the, the Duck Hunt Mario Brothers combo cartridge that came with it. Duck Hunt. Duck yeah. Hunt. Duck Hunt. And uh, Master Blaster. And Titris. <laughs> and I find it funny because for the, with the Switch was just released. We talked about this before. Yeah. They actually remade an HD remake of Master Blaster for the Switch. What? And I'm like, I really want that game now. <laughs> As if I didn't want to switch bad enough to begin with. Now I want it just to play Master Blaster. Oh, you can, like, you can get like an emulator for the NES. Well, and just I'm play pretty Master sure Blaster. you can actually get it for PC or no, not PC. I could get it for the 3DS if I wanted to. Yeah, but I still want to. Play. So, as far as uh, like, there's some games, uh, some retro video games that go for hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars. Um, Earthbound is a very good uh, example of that. It's a $250 mm-hmm. game. Um, and Nintendo released it on the Virtual Console. And guess what? 
the price of the game did not drop at all. Oh, it's no. still it's still you know a classic. It's an amazing game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as retro video game collecting well, is concerned, putting it out virtually on the market doesn't take away the physical copies. That no, are still if out there. anything, so, it would increase so, the value. Well, of the it's it's, copy. St- it's still it's still going to be a rarity no matter what. But what you would saying. think that pe- like the, the the value would actually drop because people can oh well I can just get it on the virtual console I, I don't the need value, to spend the value would drop if they re-released a physical copy. I don't even think that because a true collector wants the very first edition of something. The they original. want it first. They want the original. Oh, yeah, I forgot. So this even, is the guy who doesn't open his toys. Yeah. Yeah. So even if they re-released it on cartridge, people would still pay big money for those originals so they could say, well, yeah, you might have it, but yours was just produced. Like uh, Mine's the original, still in box sure. from 1980. I guess whatever. that's why when you look at the Nintendo World Championships, the uh, reproduction cards aren't worth as much as exactly. like, the ones that were handed out. It's all about having the original. <laughs> Not at all! No, no, because like, the reproduction cards you can get for like 20 bucks. The actual cards are like... That's why I said it. That's what he said. <laughs> that's what he just said. Well, I mean, yeah, it's because... Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. But like... I don't know. There, there were some games that like blew my mind that were like, um, you know, when you go from playing something like Super Mario One or Duck Hunt and and how rudimentary it was, and then all of a sudden, you're playing Final Fantasy One even. Yeah. One and two on the. On the they they did so much with those games. Like it was kind of hard to believe, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's something that like. There are so many of those games I, I want to go back and play, but I just don't have the time. Um, I feel like a lot of games nowadays are... You, know, you put so much work into it, and you don't really get any reward, right? See, I laugh at your comment about how you don't really have the time to go back and play those, because I consider the old games compared to the new games. A new game nowadays, people would laugh at you if you said, oh, well, yeah, you can sit down and you can beat it in like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> if if it doesn't give you like multiple hours of, of play time that's, then it's just not worth that's it that's right open but source the original are... game you could sit down and play Mario Brothers and beat it in what like 20 minutes or something if you knew what you were doing I, I watched my buddy Kyle do it in 11 yeah um, but yeah. Um, but the other day I went on your Steam profile and you've sunk almost 600 hours into Rust so. into Rust yeah <laughs> so here's the thing is that I and that's that's a big problem that I have with, with these crafting survival games is that sure they, they keep my attention span for, for a long time and open I can open world games or these these open world games just kind of in general like I can fuck around and go out there and try to craft and farm and, and do all this but there's not really an end goal right like other I mean than stay alive other than staying alive with uh, with like these old Nintendo games like it gave you an end uh, I'm sorry to say I'm saying Nintendo but Beat like the these boss, old save the princess exactly right so I mean like you now sure someone can go in and, and you know beat we'll say Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo and 20 minutes um but you have to know what you're doing to a point <laughs> like like a lot of these games you know today you, you pick up their intuitive and you know or they they baby you for a while so you're talking about just like linear versus non-linear <clears throat> exactly yeah so you're like no matter how you do it you're gonna go to this point so it's i, I find that a lot of games today are just they don't give you as much replay replay value as much as I think they give more. Yeah, games nowadays give more replay value. Okay, so so instead of mastering the first world of Super Mario Three uh, for the hundredth time, uh, you do something different today on a game that you've played for six, seven hundred hours, and you're still doing different things. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's a different game every time you play. Skyrim. I was I was gonna say Skyrim. Games, yeah, is a um, great example. I love Skyrim. I, honest- I like what I like about it is that. You don't. You're not forced to play the main story. Yeah. If you want to get in there, just fuck around, create your own game. You can do that. Give her, yeah. So I guess the main thing I'm trying to think of is like, there's like this classic Nintendo hard, like this, like this retro, this hard retro video game. Yeah. Like, uh, there's a lot of games that I've played. Skull, Skull Jagger, Skull Jagger, however you want to pronounce it, is one of those games. Um, it's that a terrible just game. Poorly made. Skull a. <laughs> A, it's a terrible game. Uh, B, it's so I'm pretty sure what it, what is it? You're a pirate and you have bubblegum powers. Basically, yeah, you pick up bubblegum and you use them. See, I had never heard tell of it until I saw an episode of Green, Game Grumps where they played it. And I have it. It's yeah, bad. The, yeah, the funny part about that is, is like before I even had watched uh, Game Grumps ever, I was I was over at Alex's place and he had all his SNES games and we were playing around with them. I was like, Scully Egger, what the fuck is this? And he goes, oh, play it. It's great. It's my childhood game. 
<laughs> like, and, uh, it's terrible. <laughs> wait, did you really have it as a child, or were you just messing? I with actually it? had it as a child. Yeah. What's what was like the defining mm. game as a kid? Because uh, the games that we played as kids would be considered retro. I I think to people nowadays. So, what 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 was like? What was the point where you said, "Oh, I, I'm I'm a person who actively plays a lot of video games now because of this"? Was there like a turning point? For me, it was probably that first time I played Mario Brothers on on the NES. See, for me, I guess Just there were... it was the whole concept of being able to to play a game on my TV. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I used to rent Super Nintendo games right from the grocery store uh, in my hometown. Uh, there was, uh, it was Link to the Past, a Zelda Link to the Past, but I never beat it. I, I, I only had it for a few days, uh, and eventually I ended up buying it. After you know, in, when I was in high school, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, you know, this is a great game. I'll think I'll buy it. Uh, so I had a friend that went to a flea market, bought it for me, and I still haven't beaten it. <laughs> this is like, this is like literally a decade later. I still haven't beaten it. Um, but the, I think one of the turning points was probably Goldeneye. Or Super uh, Super Mario sixty four for the Super Nintendo, or not Super or the Nintendo sixty four. Uh, they were good games, yeah. like they were solid. I uh, I think like the games that I remember most fondly playing were on the PlayStation one. So like I had kind of taken, we had an NES. Our friend had a Super Nintendo, and I'd kind of taken those for granted sure. until the point that we had a PlayStation one. I wasn't marveling at the fact that you could play a game on your TV because <laughs> I, I was born into it. Like. And my dad was sitting there playing Mario. You know what I mean? Basically, yeah. Um, so it wasn't until later on that we got our PlayStation One. I started playing games like Spyro the Dragon or Crash Bandicoot that I got like heavily into them. And there was at first I was just like, oh, I beat it, whatever. And then I remember one time I sat there in her basement just playing it for hours and hours and hours because I was trying to beat it like one hundred percent, like get all the crystals, get all the coins, yeah, get everything. You know what I mean? And I was like. Oh, okay. So this this is my life now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it came, I guess, even more heavily when I was playing uh, The Legend of Zelda on my Nintendo sixty four. Um, I hadn't played the the first two Zeldas on the NES or Link to the Past. I so I sat down. I played Ocarina of Time, and then I played Majora's Mask, and I beat them both. And I was just like, I just want to keep playing those. And then that's when I found the the uh, prequels to that. So yeah. I mean, I, I think as far as that, you know, what game got me into actually gaming yep. uh, consistency cons- consistently was probably the Ratchet and Clank series on the PS2. And that's, I, I guess I kind of started yeah, late where that screams retro like the PS2. <laughs> exactly, no. No, but like that's that's what, I'm no, not saying that it's I retro. I saying retro, I just said what, no, no, what kind of game in like, general. So, I mean, that kind of defined it for me, like a game yeah. with like a story that, and I mean, you, after you were done the first story, yeah. you would go back from the very beginning with like an advantage of sorts, but things would be a little bit harder. Yeah. It was just overall a great series. Yeah. And that's what kind of got me into wanting to find more games that were like this. And like, yeah, I could, well, and that's own. the thing is, it's always the first game that you get. That's kind of, kind of be more, you know, like when I was, I played Mario. So I ended up playing like crash bandicoot cause it was another platformer. It was 3d, but like I'd play games that were kind of similar. And then I played Zelda and I was just like, Oh, I like, like, old English folky medieval type whatever sword and shield type adventures and that's what led me down to like down the road when I wanted to play like Diablo Oblivion yeah. and then pl- ended up playing Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like getting into all that old nerdy ass shit sure it's probably the most retro game that I've ever played though what's that Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> I mean I mean, I mean the actual Pen and tabletop, yeah, yeah. I was just saying, I don't remember there being a Dungeons and Dragons video game. There's lots. Well, I mean, other than <clears throat> the the MMOs and stuff that have come out. Well, I guess there was one on, there like was, the Neverwinter games are set in Dungeons and Dragons. The, aren't there was a Dungeons and Dragons game on the Commodore, I believe. Was there? Yeah, because I remember when I was at, I was at um, like a like a used goods store or whatever when I was a kid. And I found a Dungeons and Dragons box set with the big like seven inch floppy disk. Oh god! And I pulled them out and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And my dad's like, "I, I don't even know where we'd get the thing to play that anymore." But it was like a Dungeons and Dragons, and like you you 
you're like insert your floppy disk and then you take out the paper and you're just like i want to be a barbarian and you match up the code <laughs> yeah it's pretty fun uh, well i guess you kind of mentioned so with those text-based games i'm assuming that's what it was yeah. right um the original and i ended up playing it was zork uh where it's you know you choose your own adventure type thing uh but it's basically an rpg because you actually get weapons and shit and you have to you know there's luck in in, in uh rng in it and me and buddy both loaded up the same time because he's like hey play this so we start going through the same thing and when we both end up on a mountain i'm like hey jordan i'm on a mountain he's like me too i'm like i wonder jump (laughs) we jump off the mountain by mistake i'm like and i went to go type back to him this is all in the msn days i'm like typing back to him like I jumped off the mountain. He's like, me too. <laughs> we both got to the same point. It's like old text-based games. Oh, it's old tech-based games, right? But I mean, that's there's technically some, retro to a point, right? That's retro some, PC games. There's some new ones that are retro PC games. I don't even think those two things would ever go hand in hand, eh? No, I don't know. I can kind of see. It. I remember Math Blaster. Oh God, that my parents got me, which was literally like there was like a ray gun and math equations and you just shoot the right answer the alien with the right answer I think I on played it. that too and it was pretty much just duck hunt on your computer but with math equations yeah now that we're getting to the point of PCs I think we're moving out of retro games so any lessons learned on that I'm still old as fuck yeah <laughs> I my childhood isn't quite as good as I remember it oh <laughs> <laughs> my friend. yeah lessons learned Greg's old as fuck and Alex is Sad as fuck. Life sucks. <laughs> sad. Hey guys, thanks for watching that episode of the Words Are Hard show. Uh, let us know about your favorite retro games down in the comments below, uh, or maybe you're just your favorite game in general. Uh, don't forget to leave those topics down there along with a request. If your topic's drawn, we'll do that request. You know the whole deal. You can follow us on social media. Links are in the description. We got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Lots of fun stuff happening there. Uh, You can also find a link to our merch store where you can buy shirts, uh, mugs, all kinds of fun stuff with our faces on it and stuff. We don't see a dime of that, but it would be a lot of fun to own some of that stuff, wouldn't it? Yep. Um, (laughs) If you want to subscribe to the channel, you can click the icon between Alex and I here. And if you want to watch our previous episode, click here between Greg and I.